Uh, and thanks you at home for joining us this hour. Happy to have you with us. There's a lot to get to tonight. And because it's Friday, for all the other things it is, it's Friday. And as we have learned in this era, anything can happen on a Friday night at any moment. Um, so it's good that you're here. No matter how the elections go on Tuesday night, there are a few things that we know to expect pretty much as soon as the elections are over. Um, in electoral politics, for example, one of the things that will probably start happening really soon after the elections next week is that Democrats who are considering running for president in 2020, Democrats will start declaring their intentions to do so. Um, we already have a pretty good idea about a pretty long list of Democrats who are thinking about running. All of them have more or less been holding back, um, I think, in order to focus on these very, very important elections next week. But once those elections are over next week, I think we should probably expect to see that damn break. Also, after the elections, we expect the Republican Party in Congress, whether they're able to hold on to the House or not, um, we expect the Republican Party to move fairly quickly to pick their new leadership. Remember that Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House, the leader of the Republicans in Congress, he's out. He is not running for re-election this year. There will be somebody new from his district in Congress. Uh, the Republicans will need to pick a new speaker and all new leadership. Once those elections happen next week, we, we will get the new Republican leadership in Congress as well. Also, two days after the election, we're expecting to see some very public signs of what Robert Mueller is doing, what the special counsel's office and its investigation have been up to for these last couple of months when they have been publicly quiet in the lead up to the election. Literally two days after the election on Tuesday next week, on Thursday next week, we expect to see a senior prosecutor who works for Robert Mueller, a, a sort of feared and revered Justice Department appellate expert named uh, Michael Dreeben. Next Thursday, we expect to see him arguing an important constitutional case related to the special counsel's office in federal court in Washington, basically defending the existence of Robert Mueller's appointment and the special counsel investigation as a whole against a particular witness who has been subpoenaed by the special counsel, but who has been refusing to show up and testify in response to that subpoena. So we're expecting that big court fight next week. Should be fascinating. We are also expecting, shortly after the elections, um, we're expecting that President Trump's national security advisor, Mike Flynn, will learn how much time he's going to get in prison, if any. I mean, it's sort of amazing from a big picture perspective, right? We are heading into the first election after President Trump was elected. And at the time of this first midterm election, it is less than two years since he was elected. Already, his campaign chair is convicted on multiple felonies and is awaiting sentencing. His deputy campaign chair pled guilty to multiple felonies and is awaiting sentencing. His personal lawyer has pled guilty to multiple felonies and is awaiting sentencing. And his national security advisor has pled guilty and is awaiting sentencing. Uh, of that delightful cast of characters, Mike Flynn, and then actually maybe Michael Cohen, um, we'll learn shortly after the elections what their sentences are going to be. So all of that stuff we've known to we've sort of had on the calendar. We've known all that stuff is on tap for once the elections happen for a while now. But there is another thing um, that we're pretty sure is going to happen as soon as the election takes place next week. Um, and it is something that we just got some important news about tonight. The president himself and even some Senate Republicans who used to warn him against this, he used to tell the president that he definitely shouldn't do this. Some Senate Republicans and the White House all now seem to be in agreement and on the same page and no longer fighting about the fact that once next week's elections are over, President Trump is going to fire the attorney general. He's going to fire Jeff Sessions or Jeff Sessions will resign. And as you know, there is so much to say about Jeff Sessions, but just focusing in on one particular consequence of the prospect of him getting fired or leaving office as soon as the elections wrap up next week, which seems like a very real possibility. You may recall that around the time he became Trump's nominee for attorney general, um, Jeff Sessions lied both to the Senate and to the public about his own contacts with Russian government officials during the Trump campaign, when he was a top official in the Trump campaign. When those lies by Jeff Sessions were revealed by the Washington Post, 
Um, by then, newly minted Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he had to announce that he would henceforth be recused from any Justice Department matter related to the 2016 campaign, including anything related to the Russia investigation. Because of that recusal, it is not Jeff Sessions, it's the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein who oversees the Mueller investigation at the Justice Department. That means Mueller and his prosecutors all have to notify Rod Rosenstein of any significant advances or significant decisions in their investigation. Rosenstein also substantially controls the budget for Mueller's investigation. If Jeff Sessions is fired or resigns right after next week's election, that would leave Rod Rosenstein still in charge of the Mueller investigation temporarily until a new attorney general could be confirmed and sworn in. At that point, the new attorney general would pre pre presumably would have no reason to recuse him or herself from the Russia investigation. So once the new attorney general was sworn in, at that point, Rod Rosenstein presumably would have to hand over the reins overseeing that investigation to whoever the new attorney general was. That said, if Rod Rosenstein is fired too, or if he too is forced to resign, boom, right? That's it right away. As soon as that happens, the Mueller investigation would instantly become somebody else's property. Now, we have known about this possibility for a long time. Just as a technical matter, we have known that this is how it would work. When a special counsel is appointed, Robert Mueller, right? The special counsel's office is supposed to be overseen by the number one official at the Justice Department. That's attorney general. In this case, the attorney general is recused, so it goes down to the number two official in the department, Rod Rosenstein. He's been doing it. If Rod Rosenstein is gone, if they fire him or make him resign after the election, too, Technically, control of the Mueller investigation is supposed to then go to the number three official in the Justice Department, but for months now, there's been nobody in the number three job in the Justice Department. And so therefore, if Rosenstein goes and control of the investigation does have to get kicked down the hierarchy, the place it lands, the person who gets the gig, would be the number four position in the Justice Department, which in this instance would be defined as the Solicitor General of the United States. Okay, before tonight, before this new news that has just broken this evening. It has previously been assumed, or it has at least seemed, like if this happened, if Rosenstein goes, the Solicitor General would be in line to oversee the Mueller investigation. But this particular Solicitor General, the guy who's in that job right now, he too would have to be re recused from the Mueller investigation because he has a very specific conflict. The Solicitor General of the United States is Noel Francisco. Before becoming the Solicitor General, he had circulated at the rich upper edges of Republican lawyering uh, for a long time. He served in the George W. Bush administration. Uh, newly obtained emails just published by the Guardian newspaper show he was also part of the secret elite all-male dinner club um, with newly minted Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Boys only. Nobody was able to ask Kavanaugh about that at his confirmation hearings, but they both were apparently part of an, a, a secret elite all-male Republican lawyers dinner club. Um, but Noel Francisco was also a partner at the cream of the crop big Republican law firm called Jones Day. No, and there's nothing at all scandalous about that. Jones Day is a big prestigious law firm. The problem it poses here is that if Noel Francisco wants to take over supervision of the Mueller investigation, he really can't. Because Jones Day, his law firm, represents the Trump campaign in the Mueller investigation. They represent the most important client in that investigation. They represent the most important client in that fight. Right? How can a guy who's a partner at this law firm, who still has an ongoing financial relationship with that law firm, how could he objectively, on behalf of the United States, oversee this big, consequential, criminal counterintelligence investigation and prosecution when the central subject of that investigation is a client of his law firm, right? You just can't do that. It's a clean, pure conflict of interest. It makes no sense. Well, that brings us to tonight's news. Crew, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, big ethics watchdog group in D.C., tonight they have obtained this. Uh, it is a short document, fits on a quarter page, actually looks kind of more like a permission slip than an actual government form. Um, but that's basically what it is. What Crew has just obtained and published tonight is this short document, which shows that in the spring of this year, in April of this year, the Trump White House issued a secret permission slip to Solicitor General Noel Francisco, which excuses him from the ethics rules 
that would otherwise block him from being involved in any legal matter involving the law firm at which he was a partner, Jones Day. You can see the title there of the document, Executive Order 13770, a waiver for Noel Francisco. It appears to be signed by White House Counsel Don McGahn. I know you can't read that, but I'm told, trust me, that's his signature, signed on April 24th this year. And it's basically very simple language. I grant a waiver for Noel Francisco, Solicitor General, to participate in matters in which Jones Day, his former law firm, represents a party. Now, why does he get permission to do that? Why is he excused from the ethics rules that otherwise block him from doing that for very good reasons? Don't know. Doesn't say. No reasons given. There's just this terse pronouncement that he is excused. And this document until today has been a secret, which itself is a story. The White House is supposed to maintain an online list where they essentially make a public notice of, of things like this. For some reason, the one they did for Noel Francisco wasn't put on the list. These are all the things they've posted online. You can see they're posted alphabetically. Noel Francisco should be right there between uh, Forsgren Dennis and Gordon Haggerty Lisa, but he's not there. Nevertheless, crew, to their credit, obtained this document. And so as of tonight, we can now tell, we can now see for the first time that the Trump White House has been maneuvering. So if Rod Rosenstein is fired or quits, the guy from the law firm that is representing the Trump campaign in the Russia investigation will be allowed to oversee, to take over the whole Russia investigation. Now, we have posted that document online if you want to see it at our website, mattoblog.com. Uh, but it is crew that obtained this for the first time and credit to them for getting it and for making it public. And it's worth knowing about, right? It's, 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 a, it's worth knowing about in its own right. I also think this is just a good reminder at this point in the news cycle and in this moment in history, just in general, <laughs> keep your headlights on right now. Keep your headlights on for, for this next week, even after the election. I mean, even just this story here about the Solicitor General, about the guy who would take over the Mueller investigation if they fire Rod Rosenstein. I mean, this is already looking a little bit nuts, right? And they may try to do some nut stuff. They may try to make some of these big controversial moves all of a sudden before the confetti has hit the ground next week. And with this one, honestly, I mean, I don't know how this gets resolved. I mean, I have a feeling I know why they kept it secret all these months, but I don't know how this gets fixed. I mean, particularly if they're going to try to sort of spring this sort of thing on us. So nobody knows until it happens that the Solicitor General is going to be allowed to do this once they fire Rosenstein. I mean, this is just whether or not you have any sense of the, how the legal ethics on something like this would honestly work. This is like the Rachel Maddow show is in big trouble. The Rachel Maddow, is in, Maddow show is involved in some big like financial scandal. And there's going to be an investigation. And then I go and get a waiver so that I am allowed to oversee the investigation into this big scandal at the Rachel Maddow show. It's like, why? What's the problem? I got a waiver. <laughs> Turns out it's fine. I can be impartial. Why wouldn't I be able to investigate this fully? But that's what they may be trying to do to put the whole Mueller investigation under a whole different kind of control um, in very short order. So, watch that. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.